Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Hi, this is Terry Van Oy. You are looking inside my online classroom, Math Class with Terry V. I work personally and privately with students, middle school, high school, college, and beyond uh, from all over the world, overseas, Canada, U.S., and um, my hour-long sessions are interactive and conversational and very engaging. Uh, we use this whiteboard that you can see, and that's what I'm using for today's lesson. Keep in mind that uh, I'd love to work with uh, students uh, from all over and uh, you know if you watch this video and like what you see, make some comments, uh, subscribe if you'd like and uh, if you're a parent consider uh, calling my toll free number listed at the top there or go to my website and check it out. The first lesson is free to check it out. Alright, let's go to today's lesson. All right, this is problem set two, and what we're going to talk about is what's on this page, of course, a quick review, but we're going to be using inverse functions. The focus here is to find missing angles of a right triangle. So again, you'll need to know and remember the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios and memorize that. One way to do that is SOKATOA, SOKATOA, and we'll be talking about that. We've got two legs of a right triangle and the hypotenuse and we have some basic rules as you can see. Number one, use Pythagorean theorem to find the missing third side if you know two out of the three sides. We're going to use trig ratios to find the missing side but the focus in this video is number three, use inverse functions to find a missing angle. Alright, I'll show you how to do that on your calculator. And of course at times you'll know two out of three angles of the triangle and all three add up to 180 so you can find missing angles that way if you know at least one acute angle. All right, let's take a look at some examples. All right, this first triangle on the left, I'm going to talk you through, and the idea is we're looking for that angle right there, x. And all we know is it's a right triangle, and we have um, two legs, 48 and 55, and the hypotenuse is 73 units long. All right, let's take a look. First of all, the angle that we're asking about is this one right here, and that's called a reference angle. Okay, Everything is in reference to that angle. Now notice from that angle, the 73 is the hypotenuse. In fact, it's always going to be the hypotenuse in this triangle. But this is the adjacent leg, so think about that. And the 48 is directly across from that angle, so we call out the opposite leg. And the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse. All right. Now I put these labels in here because we have a choice of how to find that angle. All right. First of all, if you are using a sine button on your calculator, that's to find a missing side. But if you have a sine minus 1, in other words that's the inverse sine, that's how you can find the angle measure if you know something about the sides. All right. On a calculator, you'll find a cosine minus 1. So that's your inverse cosine button and sometimes you'll be using the inverse tangent which is tan minus one. Alright, now again depends on your calculator but in some cases you'll hit sine cosine tangent and then the inverse key or a second function key, sometimes a shift key or look for these keys here that already have the minus one and that's how you do it. So I'll show this to you on my online calculator as we get through this. Alright, to find the missing angle there if I want to use the 55 and the 73, I can do adjacent over hypotenuse, and that would be cosine. All right. So first of all, I would say cosine of x equals 55 over 73. Okay, adjacent over hypotenuse. Or I could use the 48 and the 73 opposite over hypotenuse. That would be the sine function. So I could do sine of x equals 48 over 73. Or if I want to use the tangent, I do tangent. Now remember what the ratio is, opposite over adjacent, so it would be 48 over 55. Tangent x 
equals 48 over 55. Okay, opposite over adjacent. Now obviously the next step is to convert these into decimals and I'll go ahead and do that and then we're going to take the inverse of whatever function we're talking about. So I'm going to show you three different ways to get that missing angle. All right, so here are the three decimal values for um, each of those ratios, and I round to four decimal places. Usually it goes on a lot more digits after that. So what I do is I have cosine of x equals that decimal amount, okay? Now what I need to do is reverse it so I can solve for x. So x is going to be, this is how you write it, the cosine minus 1 in other words, the inverse cosine of that decimal value. All right, that's one way to find it, and I'll use my calculator in a minute. Or I can say the inverse sine of that decimal value, 0 0.6575. Or I can use the inverse tangent. Okay, again, I don't have to do all three methods, just choose one, but I want to teach all three here at the same time. All right, you can just kind of figure out what numbers would be easier to work with and go that way. All right, so as we solve for x, remember it's a missing angle, so it'll be degrees when we do our calculations. All right, let me bring the calculator over in this direction. All right, so what I'm going to do in this calculator um, I input the value first, so it's 0.7534. And then I do um, a shift key here, and now I have my inverse function keys available. So that's the inverse cosine, and I press cosine minus 1. Now it says 41.1. All right, let's do that. Notice how any way that I do it, any of these three methods gives me the same answer. Now these are all rounded amounts and they're off by a little bit, but it's just basically a rounding um, adjustment that we have to make. 41 degrees, okay? Now I would like you to take a look at this example up here and try this and I'll have another one too. So get your calculator ready, figure out what inverse functions you're going to use. You have a choice of three and give it a shot. To find my missing angle x, that's my reference angle. And remember that from that angle, I can label this the hypotenuse. This is going to be the opposite leg, directly opposite the angle. And the 24 is going to be the adjacent leg. Okay, it's important that we don't mix that up. All right, from that, can you think of three different ways to figure out the angle? You're going to use an inverse function. So here's what you come up with. The sine of x is the opposite over hypotenuse, 32 over 40, which divides out to be 0.8. Let's write that as the inverse sine, or x, my missing angle, is the inverse sine of 0.8. And we'll use our calculator in a minute. How about this one? What if you use the cosine function? That would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And so the missing angle x could be written as the inverse cosine of 0.6. Okay, that is 0.6. My pen freaked out there for a moment. Then the tangent could be 32 over 24. That's the opposite over adjacent. 1.33333. That's a repeating 3, but we'll go ahead and round it to 4 um, digits there. All right, so the x um, missing angle could be the inverse tangent of that decimal. All right, now you use your calculator and see if you can get the same answer, whichever method you used, or maybe all three. All right, 53 degrees, rounded to the nearest whole percent. Okay, 53 degrees. All right, and we have one more example for you to try. Here the hypotenuse is 97, the legs are 72 and 65, and this is your reference angle, looking for the measure of that angle. All right, you choose one of the three functions, do the inverse function to find the missing angle. All right, notice how I'm writing this, this is just a shortcut. 
The missing angle x is the inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse, or the inverse cosine of adjacent over hypotenuse, or the inverse tangent of the opposite over adjacent. All right, we should get the same answer. Give it a try. Answer, 47.9 degrees, round to the nearest tenth of a degree. All right, thank you for joining me, and look for the next video, which gives you a look at how you solve the entire right triangle with sides and angles. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.